In January 2020, St. Lucia Citizenship by Investment Program, the CIP, entered into its fifth year, having first opened for business on 1st January 2016. During this time, the program has been credited by international agencies and watch groups for its value and offerings in the marketplace. And on March 30th, 2021, the annual Human Rights Report by the U.S. Department of State gave a passing grade to St. Lucia. The U.S. government report did not include the island's CIP program among that of OECS countries that were cited for lack of transparency. Chairman of the CIP board, Ryan DeVoe, says the board and the CIP unit have been resolute in ensuring strong governance, accountability, a focus on very high levels of compliance and due diligence. As a result, Senusha continues to demonstrate leadership within the region. When we, when we have these interactions on security, and um, you know, I, I get involved in some of those meetings, Nesta Alfred as well, um, you know, with the intelligence community, and we do those you know, fairly regularly, um, and it's an integral part to the integrity of our entire program. Um, and so I think you know, the fact that you know, finally it has been recognized, and so we, because I, I would say historically, you know, the region was painted with, with a broad brush. And so the fact that that distinction is being made, I think, is recognition of, you know, the work and the effort we're putting in to ensure that these programs or, you know, the program in Senusha is well run, is, is transparent, you know, is run with integrity, etc. The CIP chairman says government's decision to introduce the legislation for the establishment of the National Economic Fund fundamentally changed the levels of accountability and transparency. The National Economic Fund is being governed by a board of directors that oversees the receipt, investment and expenditure of the monies raised from CIP. Government has to apply to the board for use of those funds. Um, and that was always in the initial legislation, you know, had not been put in place. It's finally now in place. And that is the mechanism, you know, you know where funds are placed to then be you know, used within our economy. And obviously that's been one of the big, you know, where's the CIP funds right. gone? Mm -hmm. um, and as I say, I mean, you know, that, you know, all of these things take time. I've learned, you know, through this process that nothing happens as quickly perhaps as it could in the private sector. But, you know, at the end of the day, we have been steadily working on these things and they're all there to ensure again that, that you know, the, the transparency, the integrity of the program is where we want it to be. St. Lucia's Prime Minister, Honorable Alan Chastney, who has responsibility for the CIP, has been lobbying for the creation of an OECS CIP program to better solidify the gains in the subregion. Mr. DeVoe says there is great merit and value in that proposal. I think, you know, St. Lucia is a huge proponent of that. And again, when we drive, you know, the integrity and the transparency that we believe we've demonstrated, we've, we've you know, done here in St. Lucia, we think that's important for the region. We think it's important for sustainability. Um, when you talk about you know, due diligence and having a common standard, we fully support it. Um, our own Nesta Alfred is, is you know, chair of the regional committee of the CEOs. And so that is an agenda that we definitely support. You know, you've seen recent traction with the ECCB mm -hmm. looking to you know, try and facilitate some of that. For the financial year 2020-2021, March ending, St. Lucia received 415 CIP applications. 285 have been granted thus far. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting.